time to get into the starting 11. The 11 that us individually would like to see in that game. We want you to get involved as well in the comments. Who do you want to see start this game against Nottingham Forest? It's a huge game for Arsenal. Make no mistake about it, right? You know, other teams around us in that sort of top four right now, five if you include Tottenham. I've got games as well. We cannot afford to slip up here away at a team that, let's remember, a relegation threatened. This is a game that you look up on paper and say, we're supposed to win. Although we know the Premier League is not easy and we haven't exactly done well at this ground. We haven't won here the last three occasions we've come here. We got beat here last season. Um, as a matter of fact, we've lost all three of those games. Yeah, we? yeah. So we need to come here and get a result. So the starting 11 for this game is going to be really, really important. We've got Turkish here, we've got James here. Guys, let's just get straight into it, man. This starting 11 is going to be huge mm. in goal. Yeah, coming off his best game for the club, David Rea. It'd be okay. a shock to see him dropped after that. <laughs> you never know. It's a shock to see him come into the club, so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. And I was calling for Rams the other game before because I felt he deserved off performance against Liverpool. Being consistent, Ryan's deserved it. He keeps his place. Ryan's Arteta's number one. He will play. Yeah, Ryan will play. I think this is the one time when I'll, I'm with you guys. I, I've been calling for Ramsdale. But I think if you go off of, you judge things off of form. I thought he had a very good game in the last game. You know what I mean? And I thought he, he still, remember he, his distribution for one of the goals was fantastic. So, yeah, Raya definitely keeps his place. Did, did you see that? Sorry to, to, to um, dive, well, not dive there a little, but did you see that? I don't know, was it a meme or something that said, if that was Ramsdale in that situation, he would have gone on grind and stuck his tongue out to the away fan. <laughs> and I can't lie, there's some truth in that. There's some truth in that. Whereas Raya got on his feet, distributed, and we scored our, what, third yeah. goal? Yeah, yeah, it was great. So, all right, Raya in goal, uh, right back. Um, I guess we're all in agreement, Ben White. Yeah. Yeah, no real options there. Defensively, we're quite limited at the moment. Yeah. yeah. And he's looking sharp. He's probably had his yeah. best. I think that was probably his best game last time out. Yeah. Yeah. True, you know, because... You know what, when I really think about players that needed that break, he's one of them. Yeah. Because I was looking at some of his performances and I was like, is that the guy that we had last season? Yeah. He was looking a bit of a shadow, but he did look a lot sharper yeah. in that game. So, yeah, I, I think you make a great that point. Thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, totally. Yeah. And centre backs, listen, um, definitely Saliba and Gabriel had an excellent game, you know, um, against Palace. Can you believe they still denied them that? Oh, I that can't goal. believe they didn't give him that second goal. Why? Why is that? I mean, goalkeeper own goal. Like, the one they gave the other day to Madweke in the uh, oh, yeah. in the Middlesbrough yeah. game, where the guy's quite literally booted it into the top corner, and they've got yeah, Madweke's got yeah. three to the right. With his on top. I guess it's yeah. I guess it's like sometimes remember like the, the Jorginho one against Villa, where he sort of hit the post and it comes but back off a, but is it, it, Yeah, but he didn't actually hit a post, did it? It's like it's come. I don't know. I think you should. He's kicked the ball in the direction of the goal. Yeah. I think he should have got that. But, I can't um, believe they gave him oh. Yeah, Yeah, but Gabriel definitely in mm -hmm. left back. Zinchenko, I think, hey, look, we've said Zabaya had his best game. You said Ben White's had his best game. I think Zinchenko probably had his best game as well um, at left back last time at Goose Palace. Yeah, I liked his performance. We've had the options that we, we'd hope to have moving forward with Timber and Tommy out. Zinchenko with that performance, easy, easy. Do you look at it and think... You know, you're going to come up against a counter-attacking team. You know, he's, do you want a more disciplined back four? I, I would. but Maybe a Kivior in there, but... I don't know if that's more disciplined because he just looks like a fish out of water in the left-back positions. So, mm. uh, just for that fact alone, I think Zinchenko, even if Zinchenko didn't come off his best game, I'd be selecting Zinchenko today. I think that's the key point. Kivior hasn't looked good in that role. Like in principle, in theory, yeah, I love it. And, you know, we, we saw Tommy Asu, for example, away at Sevilla come in and then he got a little bit of a run. You know, if it, were, if it were Tommy Asu or a Timber with it, I'd say, sure, I actually think this is probably one of those games with the pace they have on the wings, you do want to play around with it a little bit. But Kivio hasn't looked comfortable at left back at all. And Zinni, Zinni's such a strange one for me because his bad moments defensively are like bad. Like you watch them and you're like, this is real schoolboy stuff. But it, it kind of overshadows a lot of the really good work he does do defensively. And I keep saying he's not as bad defensively as everyone says. But then he does something that looks terrible. I'm like, well, maybe he is. So it's kind of in moments rather than across a whole 90 where he gets completely done. So I I, I think Zinni, for his performance again the other day against Palace, he looked really good on the ball. And we need to break this Forest side down. And, yeah. and our left back is weirdly a part of that. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I think if Tommy Asu's fit and when he returns, these are the type of games he'll play in. Yeah, yeah. Because it's that discipline at the back and you know what this team's going to do with a counter attack, but we're light on the ground. So, um, and it's good to see that Tommy Asu's getting the start of the Asian yeah, Cup. Yeah, yeah. I watched him last week and he looked all right as well. So, um, so yeah, Zinchenko, midfield. Right, let's... Uh, Defensive midfield. Now there's rumours about Thomas Partey. Yeah. And um his fitness, you know what I mean? He he you know, some of the rumours said he could be back for this game. Shut um, him in. <laughs> <laughs> but punched probably up. Yeah. even if he is fit, I doubt he'd get a start. I mean, what what, what would you guys go? Um, uh, DM position, is it who you got? I'm Thomas Partey, if there's any chance he can get twenty thirty before the Liverpool game, I, I want him to get that, but not a start. So if I'm looking at the DM position, I'm going with Declan Rice. Declan Rice? Not me, I'm ruthless. Parte Vieira in there as well. <laughs> that's all right. Timber as well. That's a bad three. <laughs> Midfield three. No, look, I I want Jorginho in there. I thought his cameo against Palace was superb. And it does mean shifting rice, and we'll get to that position as well. And I keep saying it, and people are bored of me of saying it, saying on AFTV, but Jorginho's cameos are only making me more convinced that he should play in that role for me. I am with James on this. I would like to see... Jorginho start this game. I like that little partnership that they had, um, you know, with with him and Rice. I think again in a team that's going to sit really deep. I like some of the balls that he plays in breaking lines, mm -hmm. and just I don't know. He's a nice when it's an away game, not so much at home, but when it's an away game, I think he gives a nice balance to that midfield. And I'd like to see, I'd like to see him in there. I'd like to see him in there for this game. I think. I I think he was. He, he 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 was sharp when he came on. The only thing with Jorginho for me, we're, we're facing a Forest side away from home where, listen, the, the, the game starts nil-nil. I think part of Jorginho's appeal from the last game, he came on and there was space to exploit. And when there's space to exploit, a midfielder like Jorginho, he, he's got that in him to exploit it. Whereas against Forest, and I'll move into the next midfield position now, I'd like Emma smith Rowe to start. And that would be my difference between you okay. two because he's also someone that came on and showed up a bit. He's someone that deserves a chance. Now he's someone that Arteta's talked up highly in the last few weeks. And against the Forest side that we're going to need some creativity. We're going to need something, you know, um, in and around the box. Something different to the norm we've seen this season. I think Emma smith -Rowe So give us your three then because it's kind of like they all work. Rice, right, smith -Rowe, Odegaard. Rice, right, smith -Rowe, Odegaard. And what would your three be? Jorginho, Rice, Odegaard. Yeah, that would be mine as well. Just start the game. You're right. I liked the performance of Smith Rowe. He looked sharp. You could see he look that that's the fittest I've seen him look. I mean, but it was twenty minutes. Do you want to throw him into this? This is gonna be a really big cauldron of a game right from the beginning, or do you want a little bit of control in the game from the start? And I just think that's what Jorginho would bring. And then later on you can get you know, you could get Smith Rowe on or Havertz or whoever you decide to bring on, but That'll be mine. This is going to be really interesting. I want to hear from you guys because the midfield is going to be interesting. And let's just say, let me throw this one at you guys. If Partey was fully fit, right, is that, what's your best midfield with Partey included? Partey, Rice, Odegaard. You totally agree. We're yeah. absolutely our best. Yeah. Well. And I really hope we see that, right? And I really hope it's not going to be when he gets fit, he's experimenting with a right back and things like that. <laughs> right. In a few weeks, I might be like, it's a right back, Ben Bale, Thomas Partey. <laughs> I really don't want to see that, but let's let's see let's see how that pans out. All right, so that's the midfield, but I think you guys want to give us your midfield because I think that this is going to be really interesting. And then up front, mm -hmm. give us your three. Martinelli, Saka, Jesus, Ooh. trust hard, but yeah. Martinelli in from the beginning. Two goals. He's he, he's been on the bench twice now. It's not just one game, and I think that regardless of Trossard also playing well in that game, played well, scored a great goal, great finish. Yeah, but Trossard came on. I mean, sorry, Martinelli came on and, and two great finishes. Of All right. Own, so, but is that right now where he's best? Coming in off the bench when you've got defenders tired, mm. running at them. We saw him in the Liverpool game. Cause he, he didn't score in that game. Yeah, but he came on late in that game or came on. Not too late, but in the second half of that game, caused Trent Alexander-Arnold lots of problems down that Or was it? No, it wasn't. It was Trent at the beginning and then they took him off yeah. and it was the young yeah. kid. But he caught Bradley. He caused them a lot of problems. And then you see him in this game, off the bench again, lots of problems, can't live with him. I mean, all of these managers talk about finishers and squads. 
Could that be the role for him and with Trossard starting or you still think right from the beginning? Like, you know what, you, you make a good point because off the bench, 65, 70 minutes on the clock, who makes a bit better impact? I think Martinelli nine times out of 10 because Trossard ain't really that player. So you make a good point there. I'm looking at the Liverpool game and saying Martinelli has to start that one. So I'd yeah. like him to maybe get 60, 70 against Forrest and then go into that. But if Trossard starts, Trossard deserves it. It's just that I've got a little so you, the Martinelli. Right, so Martinelli, Saka... Jesus. Jesus. What about you? Saka on the right, Martin on the left, and Trossard up top. Ooh, okay, no Jesus. Do you know what I think with Jesus, who I love and I probably, like, stick up for <laughs> more than most? He hasn't really proven his fitness because he's been in and out. I think he's had three separate knee injuries this season alone. That's not, you know, and this is probably all off the back of the big one he had last year. Um... Has he got to full, full sharpness yet? I'm not sure. I take your point about Liverpool. Um, Great just... chances, though. You know what I mean? He had, an assist, he had an assist in that game. Even as well. yeah, even though Jesus were at his best, I thought, against Palace, he still was creating havoc yeah. for their defence. Tight defence. But Trossard and Martinelli can do all that. To, to the level at which Jesus is doing it now, Trossard and Martinelli can do that. If we're talking Jesus in the form he was in, you know, the beginning of last season, or the first four or five months of last season... I'd say he's undroppable. You have to get him in that team. But we haven't seen that. We've seen him get close at times. The spin against Sevilla for the Martinelli goal. He's had great moments. But I just think we need to, just because he's fit, I don't think we need to force him to get back to up, back up to speed. When we've got Marte, who's in great form, you know, come off the bench, but I'd give him the start. And Trossard's got his goal and does well in the false nine. So that would be my front three. Okay, my front three. I'm going to go Saka. Jesus down the middle. I, to me... He creates havoc, right? And if you, I even saw the other day Van Dyke saying, when they asked him players you don't like to play against, yeah. it was Jesus because he don't know what he's. He comes inside, outside. He's all over the place. Listen, yeah. his finishing needs to be better, one hundred percent. But I just think well, when, uh, and the fitness thing's been an issue definitely. But if he's fit, he's a difficult. Yeah, you know when you coming up against teams that are going to be really difficult to break down. He win you a foul. You'll create havoc to that defence, to well-organised defences, more than, a, the, I think, than a Trossard will. Trossard, good finisher, but ain't really going to create those issues. And then on the left-hand side, I'd go Trossard to start with. Just based off of what I was saying to you there, that I feel I want to see... Listen, I'd probably start Martinelli against Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. But in this game, I think bringing him on later on, when it's a little bit more stretched... Where he can use his his pace, his, you know, and for that, and I I I I just you know trust I did well in the last game, scored as well. I'd stick with that front three, but later on you've got the option to bring on a, a Martinelli that will scare defenses when he comes on. So that would be mine. But it's that of you guys, we would love you to let us know what your starting eleven would be for this for a very very important game. We're up here at the City get um ground in Nottingham. This is not been a very uh, you know good hunting ground uh, for Arsenal as we talk about Robin Hood right yeah. they've been robbing us every season here right we've got to try and get a victory so this is a massive game for Arsenal so what would your starting 11 be because that is going to be so pivotal uh, thanks for watching don't forget to check out all of our videos around this game Arsenal visiting the city ground to take on Nottingham Forest it's a big one and uh, we need the three points